Hey, welcome back to another Amazon selling video. It is getting really cold here in Indiana, so you know what that means. It's time to head south. But before we do that, I'm gonna take you on a little retail arbitrage 101. I'm gonna take you sourcing out to Walmart. Now, I've been to this Walmart just last week, so hopefully we find some stuff or I can replenish the stuff that's already sold. And then I'm gonna take it home and show you how to list it on Amazon and then how to package it, poly bag, expiration date stickers, all that. So before we get started, I just wanna answer three questions that I get asked a lot. And the first is, does it still work? Yes, retail arbitrage still works. You can still do it. Actually, sellers in my group are doing better than when I started. I'm talking like $10,000 months, like a month or two after starting, where I was doing like $2,000 my first month. So yes, it still works. Actually, 2020 is a great time to get into it. Another question is, is it legal? Yes, it is legal. So I have another video up here covering this in more detail, so you can check that out. The last question that I've been asked lately is Amazon stopping ungating and no they're not. I was actually ungated in November of 2019 in Frozen, a toy brand, and I was ungated in 2017 in November in Grocery. So they're not stopping ungating. I don't know where that's coming from but members of the group are still getting ungated so I wouldn't stop the process if that's something you want to do. Alright, I think that's it so let's head out to Walmart. Year round, the Walmart toy aisle is where I head to every time. I also go to the clearance aisle and any seasonal. First thing is how you scan. So the question I'm always asked is what app I use. I use the Amazon seller app. And you just pull it up and start scanning the UPCs and the item will come up. Sometimes the item won't come up and you have to literally hit scan like you're going to take a photo and do this and then the item will come up a few different times. So you just find the one that is matching your item and that's how you scan. So I'm gonna quickly scan the aisle and see what we can find. Okay, so I just scanned this I Dig Monster. It's $9.98. It's selling for $18.25, but it's only gonna make $12, so $2 I would make, and after tax, it's really probably only a dollar something. So I'm not gonna buy it, but this is one that I'll probably watch because that's pretty high price for a $9 item. So this item is brand new and I know that because it does not have a rank on the app. I don't buy things that don't have a rank because one, it's new, or two, it doesn't sell. And if it doesn't sell, I don't want to buy it. If it has a bestseller rank, that means it's selling. And you can actually use Jungle Scout to tell you how many it's selling if you have the rank. Since I don't have rank, I can't show you, but when I find one, I'll go into that. So one of the questions I've been asked a lot is what am I thinking about the Mandalorian? I'm probably not saying it right because I don't actually watch it, but apparently there's a new one coming out. So everyone's like, should I buy it and like hold on to it? Will they go up in price? All of that. I only buy something if it's making a profit right now. I'm not trying to guess. I'm not trying to assume it's going to go up. It could be there's more toys out now because of the new show and so they actually go down in price. So it's really a gamble I don't take. If it's making money now, I'll buy it and sell it now. You always want to check for clearance that is in aisle. So this one is on sale. It's not making any money though. Another thing that happens when you scan the front of the package is you'll come up with bundle listings. So this one is a bundle of chutes and ladders, Candyland, and Hi Ho Cherio. It's going for $45, actually $50. And altogether, they're going to cost $21. So it's going to make $15 and all I have to do is bundle them all together in a poly bag. Now the rank is a little bit high for toys, but it is cute for so it might be worth a test. So she is $8. She's selling for $16 about and so it would make like $2. The problem is that while it might go up in price, there is so many of her here. So that means it's more than likely going to go down in price because they're so readily available. Now, there's another one that I got last week. I'm not going to tell you because I'm still looking for it. And she sold like as soon as it hit the UPS store. Before it ever got to Amazon, she sold out because she was different and unique in a special way. So you just want to look for things that are different, that there's not a lot of them. And yeah. So I get asked a lot like if I create my own listings and I really don't. If you're gated in toys, I'm pretty sure that you can sell My Life Fast Dolls from Walmart and Our Generation from Target. Now, I don't create listings because I don't want to take the time and I'm just, that's literally the only reason I don't want to take the time to do it. 
but these two items are something that I will keep watching because someone out there is going to make a listing and I'm pretty sure these are going to sell really well so that's a tip for you ones to watch at Walmart. Lego very rarely goes on clearance so whenever you see it you got to scan it. If you're not ungated in Lego uh, my guide can help you with that. This is all Lego clearance so I'm really glad I came today. I'll be busy scanning. If you download the Walmart app or the Target app, you can check the prices right on your phone. Another tip, if you find something and you want to get all of it because the rank is great and the return is awesome, look above and see if there's any more up there. So I have a note on my phone and before I leave the toy aisle, I'm just going to double check that I've looked for everything I want to be looking for. All right, so I am back and I'm ready to pack it all up. The music was a little too loud and there was people in the store, so I thought I'll just take a bunch of notes and fill you in when I get back in the RV. So if you're a new seller, you really want to make the clearance aisle your best friend. You should head there right away and scan everything. Some Walmarts are better than others and it changes as the seasons change and they are clearing out their shelves and putting new stuff in. So definitely get in the habit of checking the clearance aisle if you're new and gated and everything. That is really where I recommend starting. Another place to scan in Walmart is the kitchen aisle. So I think there's like six or seven aisles of kitchen stuff. Definitely head there. Seasonal is also in that area right now, so that's another great place to scan. When I first started, I was selling a lot of Pioneer Woman. Actually, I made my own listings of Pioneer Woman stuff. Uh, they didn't really sell. A couple of them did, but for the most part, it was a waste. And my mom got some Pioneer Kitchen stuff for a late Christmas present. Pioneer Woman, if it's already there, it's probably selling really well, so if you find anything that's profitable, that's another great place to start. So while I was in the clearance aisle, I was scanning a couple things and they showed that I was gated. So I went ahead and took screenshots of my screen as I went through the process because you always, 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 always want to click through. Just because it says you're gated and you can't sell it does not mean you're gated and you can't sell it. I know, right? So if you click through, you'll get approved, like I did on this one, or you will get asked for invoices like I did on this one. So the invoice one, I can't sell that one unless I want to take the trouble to go find an invoice, and I really don't. But for this other one, I was approved, and if it had made a profit, which it didn't, I could have sold it. If you're new and you're starting out and you're gated in the categories like toys and OTC, grocery, topical, beauty, that kind of stuff, if you're gated in that, that's what my guides can help you with. The one that I was gated in is just a brand and it's a random brand and I'm probably not going to find that brand again so it's not worth my time to get the invoice. But if you're gated in the full on categories or brands that you see all the time, those are the ones that you want to get invoices for so you can get ungated and that's where my guides come in to help. I just wanted to note because I found it interesting myself that I remember I mentioned that I had already scanned this Walmart and sourced it last week so I wasn't actually expecting to find a whole lot but what ended up happening was I was scanning the clearance aisle I did scan toy again and I was looking for some items that I had sold before and new items that were shared in the Bolo group which I found some but then I also scanned the kitchen aisle and that's where I found a couple of really great wins. One of the items I listed right in the store, I came up to the canning aisle and I saw that almost all everything was sold out and I remembered someone in the Bolo group had mentioned a canning item so I went ahead and scanned everything else that was still there. I found an item and I literally made $50 in 15 minutes, actually probably less. So I went ahead and listed the item right from my phone and then it sold all five of them before I ever got back to the RV. So then I went ahead and packed them up. It took less than 10 minutes to pack them up and I made $50 in 15 minutes already. This is the item. It is all packed up and ready to go to their customers. So I got to drop it off at the post office. But lightweight things that can fit in a padded envelope, they cost $4 to ship. I'll go through the whole breakdown of the profit a little bit later in the video, but I just wanted to share that it's very possible to make money in 15 minutes. If you want to know more about Fulfilled by Merchant or Fulfilled by Me, as I like to call it, I did a video recently and you can find it here where I walk through the whole process start to finish from listing in store to printing and dropping at the post office. So check that out. Okay, so in the clearance aisle, I found these steaks for two dollars and they do make a profit so I'm going to go ahead and show you in the app how it looks. So I just went ahead and scanned the UPC 
and then it pops up. So you want to tap through this first area where it says the price is $17.76 and the gross proceeds are going to be $11.62. That's where you would go through to see the potential profit. And from there, you add in the price. So these were $2. Now you'll see right here, my profit would be $9.62 on these items. So for $2, I'm going to make possibly $9.62. I got four of them. And the reason I got four of them is because it is like the end of the season for gardening and that kind of stuff. So this one's really kind of a judgment call. They had like 10 of them there. I could have grabbed them all. I mean, they are only $2, but do I really want to waste money shipping and all that for this item, which might not sell. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Jungle Scout Estimator right now. It's a free tool. I use the web one. I don't, I don't think there's an app. I'm not sure, but I just pull it up junglescout.com slash estimator. And I'm going to put in this rank. So it's 3,773 in lawn and garden. So you'll get to the website, I'm going to put in the rank, 3,773, marketplace, US, category, patio, lawn, and garden, and then we're going to hit calculate. So this category sells 1,170 a month. So how you would do competitive sellers is, let me go back to the listing. So it looks like there are three FBA sellers. So if I divide three sellers plus four for me, so there's going to be four sellers total on there, that means we can probably expect to do about 250. I'm lowering, I'm rounding down just saying if it was a thousand a month. So let's expect to do 250. I could possibly sell 250 of this item every month. Like I said, though, I mean, it's lawn and garden and we're in October. So is that really going to hold up? I don't know. I feel like the rank's going to go down. So I just got four to test. If you want to check out your Walmart clearance aisle, you might be able to find some there. Another thing I do is I'll check Keepa. So on this, it seems like the price is a pretty like good profit. I'm not sure how much they normally are. $7.74. So you can see already since I scanned them, the rank has started to go down. So let me go ahead and grab the ASIN and I'll show you how Keepa works. So I have iPhone and Keepa does not have an iPhone app. So I just pull up on my web browser, Keepa.com, and that's how I search. You search the ASIN there at the top. And then I can see here that, oh, Amazon actually usually sells them. So had I seen that in the store, I probably wouldn't have bought them. So they usually, Amazon usually sells them and you see that they're in the yellow or orange. And then these little triangles here, those are all FBA sales so it is selling for $17 so I mean I guess it's a great way to start and just kind of see how it goes but that's how you use Keepa and I probably should have done this in the store so I could show you but hey I can always return them okay so as I mentioned the canning aisle was pretty much empty that is something I look out for if you see something's empty like this Wonder Woman display it must be a new movie or something that's coming out that was almost totally cleared out so those are probably hot dolls and if I had more time, I would have scanned them, but those are things I look for. If something's sold out, you want to know what it is, and then you want to be on the lookout for later. So here is an item. Uh, it's a two-pack. I just went ahead and scanned it at Walmart. So it's a pretty decent ranking for the two-pack, and it's selling for $14. It costs $48, and it's going to make $4.69. So it's about 100% ROI, which is, you know, a good... For a lightweight item like this, it's pretty good. You could actually do this FBM too because it is lightweight if you wanted to. And then I have one more canning item that I did not buy that I just wanted to show you this. So this item, when I scanned it, it looks like the photo, like the other, it looks exactly like this listing on the photo. Only when you check it out, you see here package quantity three. That is something to watch out for. And in the title, it's actually saying you're getting three twin packs. So there I can see automatically, okay, this is not just for one. This is for all three. So for $23.87, and then you're going to get all three of them, which comes out to a cost of $13.32. So I wouldn't be making enough money for to buy it and sell it. So that's why I don't have it here to show you. But that's just something you should look out for as you're scanning. All right, so let's get to packing these up and creating a new shipment. As always, all my supplies I use are linked below. They're in every video in the helpful links and discounts area. So this is the scanner I use. You do not absolutely need this. If you're starting out and you want to save money, you don't have to buy this. You can type in manually the UPCs. I think it's worth it though because you'll save time, but it's up to you. You go ahead and go to your inventory, add a product, and it takes you to this screen. So you'll just scan the item and it pops up and you'll hit over here sell new 
sell this product. Now, if you had to scan it from the front in the store, I usually will just go ahead and hit favorite star on my phone in the app so that I can easily find it later. And then right here in features and details, you'll see the ASIN. And so I would just type in the ASIN and search it that way. So if the UPC is not coming up, that's how I find and enter them right here. Now we're back to this. So seller SKU, again, I make mine up. So mine, this was from Walmart and it was 488 and my break even. So I use Rev Seller, and this is what I mean when I say I use it all the time. So I'll say it was 488 and it's 1379. So I go back here. My price is gonna be actually I'm gonna just do it 14.99 since the price may change as it goes in. So I like to go up and not lose any potential profit if the price happened to increase and I'm sending it in and it's 13.79, but now it's selling for 14.99. So then I go back and I say, what's my break even? If I sell it for 9.99, I'll be making a dollar. If I sell it for 8.99, I'll make three cents. So 8.99 is my break even. I'm sending these to Amazon and then you just hit save and finish. Oh, I've already used that SKU before. All right. I always, always, always do Amazon barcodes. I have another video where I go over that, but you want to do Amazon barcodes because if you do the merchant barcodes, it might send it to like literally 20 different warehouses and I'd rather it go to as few as possible. And then you always have to fill this out. No battery. And then now we just add the units. So I've got 11 of these. Now, once it's on this page, I just go ahead and close it. So I'm going to add the rest of my items to my shipping plan and then I will circle back when I'm to the prep. Alright, so that is a smaller shipment. It was 36 items altogether, counting the five things I've already sold. So really my shipment has 31 items. That is super small and honestly I probably will wait and ship it all next week with more stuff after I go shopping, but I'm going to continue on just to show you the rest of the process. After you've added everything, you'll hit continue and you'll come to this screen where I've, unfortunately, because some of the stuff I'm selling, I don't want you to know because some of it was Bolo Group stuff and some of it is, you know, stuff I still want to sell and make a profit and I don't want the price to tank. So I'm not showing you everything, but from this screen, it says prep guidance where you'd have to pick how you want to do it. So in kit, instead of doing each one individually, you just go to apply to all and unfortunately half my screen is, but it says no prep needed is how the whole thing says. And you'll see it changes all of them to no prep needed. And now you can continue on without having to do it for every single one. And now we're gonna come out to the labeling part. So 31 labels, they're gonna print on just regular address sheet labels. There's 30 to a sheet and I'll go ahead and grab those. So these are the labels I use. Again, all my supplies that I'm about to show you are linked below. They're all from Amazon um, because it's easy. So just the 30 up and because I have 31, so it's 30 to a sheet and then I'll have one extra. When I have shipments that kind of leave it off, so all I'm gonna do is actually just move one label up because it's only gonna print one and then I'll probably throw the rest of the sheet away. I use my compact little laser printer here, uh, again, linked below. I think it was like $100. And it is amazing because for the two, first two years, I was using an inkjet, which is so dumb. Don't be like me. Get a laser printer. So I don't, since everything was at Walmart, I don't really have any labels to take off except for the clearance items. So that's awesome. I actually am going to take these back because it ends up that Amazon's on the listing. And while it still makes money, like $4 or something, I don't, it's not worth it to me to just have it sitting there and probably maybe it'll sell one day. But this is a Scotty Pillar. It is your best friend. Um, be careful, it is sharp. But you just literally peel it underneath. Is it showing? And it will just peel right off. It's great even for plastic. You just gotta be really careful. I use a hair dryer. I just use the low setting and I'll go right over the labels and slowly peel them off. I've done a full on like how to pack shipment video last year. So it is linked up here. I'm sorry for all the different linking videos. I'm trying to make this like a super fast 101 and not go into too much detail, but I do have other videos dedicated to all these steps. So if you wanna watch that, it is available. Oh, if your stickers come off and they leave goo, goo gone and a paper towel, just squirt a little, one, literally one squirt on a paper towel. It usually works for like five to 10 items and then you will squirt a little bit more, but it just rubs off all the goo. So you shouldn't be able to tell there was a sticker there ever. Now I've got my three pack of games. And the reason I've only did two of these is because there was only two of the shoots and ladders. Every other game there was more of, but only two shoots and ladders. So unfortunately I can only get two bundles. So if you're gonna make a set, all you have to do is make sure I've got one of each. 
put it in a poly bag. I mentioned this in my poly bag video, but I now only buy the Spartan Industry ones because the Uline ones do are repositionable and so they will come back open. Spartan is secure and they stick. So now I just find the label, stick it on. This is a set sticker, stick it on. That is so that Amazon warehouse will not separate it. So you want them to know this is a set, do not separate. And now it is ready to be boxed up and go. Another question I get asked all the time, mostly with topicals, beauty items, is what do you do if there's no expiration date? First of all, the expiration date has to be 90 days out, technically, but you should really do 120 days, which is four months, so that when it gets to Amazon, it doesn't immediately get marked as expired because if it's 90 days or less, they will put it in your stranded inventory and you have to get it back if it's expired. So it has to be at least 120 is what I go with, four months out. And so this one's expiration date is August of 2022, so it's totally fine. It has it here. If there wasn't a date on this, I wouldn't bother adding it because if the manufacturer wanted there to be a date, there would be a date. Now, sometimes if there's no date, Amazon will still ask you for the date. And if it's not there, I just go ahead and put a year out, sometimes two years out. I just make out a date far in the future. Now, the last thing is I don't, I didn't get any beauty items today, but let's just say this box was a beauty item and it was like I could open it and pull it out. What I do is I use these little circles. They're clear circle stickers. Again, everything's linked below, but I just take it off, clear sticker, and I would seal the box so that the customer knows it's brand new. Obviously, if you're buying beauty, I've said this a million times, but you want to check if it can open, check and make sure everything's sealed. And then last packing tip. If the item is touchable, so if this was in a box, but I could still touch it. It's so nice to meet ya. So if <laughs> you can touch, if you could touch the actual item, obviously this is going to go in a poly bag, but if it was in a box, but I could still like touch and feel how soft it is, you have to put it in a poly bag. If you can touch the physical item, if the packaging is not covering all of it, you have to put it in a poly bag. The reason is that you don't want it to get dirty and messed up from Amazon. So poly bag, poly bag, poly bag, you can never go wrong. You could literally poly bag everything and it wouldn't be wrong. You'd just be spending extra money on things that don't need to be poly bagged. Like if I was gonna sell this game on its own, it doesn't need a poly bag, it's already sealed. I still, these are my old Uline ones, so they're not the best, but poly bag. And you could put the label on this if you want to, or I usually, if it's like a plush or a clothing item, I just will put it on the outside. But you could put it on there, you just want to make sure that Amazon can scan it when they get in the warehouse. Another question is, what do you do with the sticker? You just put it over the UPC like that. If there was multiple, since this is two boxes, obviously I think this is covering the real UPCs, but if you could see both of them, you just have to cover one. If there's a blemish on the packaging that the sticker will cover, I will just cover the blemish and then I don't worry about the UPC. If your Amazon barcode is on it, they're always going to scan that. So it doesn't absolutely have to be over the barcode, but it should in every case possible be over the barcode. So that is really it for the shopping and sourcing packing part of it. Like I said, I'm probably gonna wait and pack up the rest of it, but I just wanted to run, really? Bubba, come on. All that would be left to do is put it into boxes and send it to the warehouse. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna wait till next week where I have a little bit more items because 30 is totally fine amount to ship, but it's gonna cost a little bit, especially if they end up putting it to different warehouses. And so I'd rather just wait until I have a hundred more things. If you're new, 30 items is great and go ahead and send it in and get that ball rolling. So last thing I wanna show you is my numbers for this small shipment. So it took an hour and a half to source. Like I said, I made $50 in 15 minutes earlier today. I'm gonna to go ahead and show you the full amount. So I would say overall, it probably took me five hours maybe. And an hour of that is because I'm also shooting this video for you. So on, you could do this part-time and make easy money. So I've got 36 items total. Again, some of them I didn't show you because I want to keep those secrets so I can make the profit. This first one is the FBM item, so let me go ahead and show you that here real fast. So it was a candy item. 
I sold it for $29. It cost $9.75. The Amazon fees on the order was $4.63. It cost $4.08. I sent it first class in a padded envelope like you saw. Super cheap. The envelope cost $0.48. Cents, and altogether, my cost of it was $18.94. And I profited $10.06, which was $50 altogether because I sold five of them. So including that item that's here, we have my total cost was $320 because I have a couple things from Target that I bought while I was just doing a personal Target run because I can't help but scanning. So I got some things and they were sitting here so I just went ahead and added them to this shipment. So all together $320 and it profited me $286 for half a day work if that. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you a little quick rundown of what retail arbitrage is selling on Amazon. If you need help ungating, I have resources to help you with whatever categories you need help ungating for. Those are all linked below. If you are totally new and this is your first Q4, I also have a Q4 guide which is available. You can get the whole bundle or you can just get whatever guide you need or want to help you in your business. As always, let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me or what questions you have and happy sourcing and I will see you back here for another Amazon selling video.